Greetings to you all, my name is Andy and welcome to my playthrough of Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance. This playthrough being, being brought to you courtesy of the Game Boy player for the Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> my policy of doing everything legit means I need to seek out more obscure options for some of these. Anyway, Metroid Fusion, believe it or not, is the first Metroid game that I owned myself and saw through to completion, so it has a special place in my heart. And of course, since then I've played all the other Metroid games, but... This one still remains one of my favourites. Let's start. I'd been assigned to watch over Biologic's research team. So I once again found myself on the surface of SR388. It was there that I was attacked by a life form I had never encountered before. It was only later that I learned the identity of my attacker, the parasitic organism we now know as X. Unaware of my condition, I was returning to the station when disaster struck. Once the X had infested my central nervous system, I lost consciousness and my ship drifted into an asteroid belt. The ship's emergency systems automatically ejected the escape pod before impact. Biologic's vessel recovered it and transported me to Galactic Federation HQ. However, during the journey, the X multiplied within me, corrupting large areas of my power suit. It then came to light that the organic components of my power suit had become so integrated with my system that it could not be removed while I was unconscious. Large portions of my suit had to be surgically removed, dramatically altering my physical appearance. However, the X in my central nervous system were too embedded to be removed safely. I was given a minimum chance of survival. Then, someone found a cure. They proposed using a Metroid cell to make an anti-X vaccine. It seems that the Federation had managed to preserve a cell culture from the last infant Metroid from SR388. The serum was prepared and injected without delay. The X parasites were immediately and completely destroyed. As for me, one life ended, yet I survived reborn as something different. Pondering this fact, I realize I owe the Metroid Hatchling my life twice over. We'll soon be arriving at the BSL research station. I must prepare for docking. The ship's computer has notified me of our approach to the Biologic Space Labs, or BSL, research station. During my surgery, the research team sent the last batch of creatures we captured there, as well as the infected pieces of my power suit. After regaining consciousness, I learned that an unexplained explosion rocked the station. For some reason, this awoke a nameless fear in my heart and now I am being sent there to investigate. My mission on the BSL station will be overseen by my new ship's computer. Following the commands of this blunt, computerized CEO is something I have to bear. It was a condition of me taking the ship. For someone who dislikes taking orders, 
This is the second time I've found myself having to do so. It makes me recall my other CO. There's been an explosion in the quarantine bay. The bay currently stores capsules containing recent samples from SR388, as well as parts of your suit infected by the X parasites. The cause of the explosion is yet unclear. Investigate. The quarantine bay is here. Move quickly and quietly. You are still unable to use most of your latent abilities. Don't forget that, Samus. Stop at the navigation room on the way, uplink from there. Is your objective clear? Now, go to the quarantine bay. Yeah, that guy is a bit unpleasant, but I'll let him go if he's a computer. <laughs> I guess hundreds of years into the future we're still to give them courtesy. <laughs> but what the hell. Anyway, standard controls for a 2D Metroid game, A to jump. You can use B to fire your arm cannon. You can use L and a combination of the control sticks to aim up and down, and of course you can crouch for a more steady aim, or hitting the multitude of enemies that are at ground level. Seriously, anybody who's played the original Metroid game will appreciate being able to crouch. <laughs> half the enemies you appear, half the enemies that you come across early on, they're slightly shorter than Samus, so it's impossible to hit them normally. I've gotta love the atmosphere this game sets up. No music, just random beeps of machinery. I don't even know what half this stuff does. The quarantine bay is ahead. Bio signs are confirmed. Be careful. Gee, thanks for locking the door behind me. <laughs> if I ever needed any more incentive, it's now. You know, the power grip, which is what Samus uses to hold on to ledges, originally that was a separate power-up, but I guess it's now fully integrated into the suit. Thank god, right? Oh. What have we got here? You again! It's an X-Parasite! Get it! Or just absorb it. I'll take that. Pressing the start button brings up your map, which is pretty good because most Metroid games you usually have to find the map room, but <laughs> we've got most of it right here for us. You can press A at any time to see your current objective. Hostile creature sighted, report to navigation room. Hitting the R button brings up our status. This basically shows us what power up Samus has right now. Alas, we have none. So I'm going to be taking my time with this game. You can finish it in as little as two hours if you're if you remember where to go. <laughs> but let's hope it doesn't come to that. These episodes will be shorter than Vesperia, mind you, for the most part. <laughs> this is unfortunate news. The specimens brought back by the field team were infected by X parasites. The X can mimic its prey. Any specimen could have hosted it. Before the explosion, a security sensor scanned one. The gelatinous X parasites invade and rapidly reproduce, killing the host creature. They may also absorb DNA and use it to mimic the host. You were almost killed by an X infection. Only the Metroid vaccine saved your life. It seems Metroids were the main predators of the X. That's why the vaccine worked so quickly and so well. But it has also changed your cellular makeup. You will never be infected by X again. In fact, you can now absorb any free-floating X parasites without a host by merely touching them. This will allow you to replenish health and restore weapons. You may also restore latent abilities this way, so pursue free X parasites whenever you possibly can. 
This station is home to many species, some violent ones. We must keep the X out of the breeding environments at all costs. This is vital, Samus. I am already detecting massive biosigns in this region. The X are gathering. This may be our chance to exterminate them, but... You are only at 10% battle capacity. Your chance of survival is extremely low. The Federation needs you alive and on duty, Samus. Is your objective clear? Now, get going. I have released the lock on level 0 hatches. Look for the blinking hatches. Well, of course the X are going to get out, otherwise we wouldn't have a game, would we? It'd just be Samus walking around a big empty station. Actually, that would be way more unnerving than what we've got in store for us. Haha, <laughs> we meet again. Ow. But yes, yellow X parasites you can use to restore your health. One X Parasite restores 10 units of health. And this right here is a save room where we can, well, save our progress. <laughs> that thing we can't get past just yet. As for these zombie scientists... Yeah, he's gone. I have received news from HQ. They can support you with downloadable weapons data. Once you have this data, you will be able to use missiles. This will help against some enemies your beam can't hurt. Head to the data room for the downloads. The data room is here. Is your objective clear? With missiles, your chance of survival climbs to 20%. Well that's good to know. There's four alternate universes where I'm already dead. Ah, elevators. A staple of the Metroid series for better or worse. That computer reminds me of a gruff Federation CEO I once served under named Adam Malkovich. He called me Lady on missions. From anyone else it would have sounded sarcastic, but Adam made it sound dignified. Out of respect and with some irony, I named the computer after him. This is a very impractical elevator. It can only fit one person at a time. What do you use if you're shifting furniture and stuff? Oh, who cares. If they have downloadable weapons data, they can probably do with, you know, transporters or replicators and things like that. Anyway, we don't need the navigation room to tell us the data room is just ahead. And with that we've got missiles, another classic staple of the Metroid series. Just by holding R we can switch to our missiles. Oh, do I need to talk to you again already? Oh. Okay, maybe I do need to talk to you. <laughs> the electrical interference has knocked out the elevators. On the main deck. This may be related to the X. I'll work on it. As for you. Try to find another way to the target. It's located here. I'm reading huge biosigns, so I hope your missiles work. To reload missiles, you can use a recharge room to absorb a special type of X parasite. You'll see them. Try it out. Is your objective clear? Missiles are your only hope. Don't hesitate to use them. Now, find a way to the target. He does have a point. A lot of times in games like this I'll be reluctant to use weapons that have limited ammo and you end up overstocking on them, but just to show you guys, this is a recharge room through here. You can use it to fully replenish your health and missiles and anything else that you have finite use of. Woohoo! Anyway... On the map here, the pink areas are the ones that we've explored, the grey areas we still haven't. But as you might expect for a station this big, not everywhere is listed on the map, so let's blow down this glowing door. You can see there we're now in some green areas. Green areas don't appear on the initial map room that you get, but they stay there afterwards. Yeah, 
Yes. You saw there the green X parasite. Those are the ones that restore your missiles. If you see fake looking walls, destroy them. Those zombie scientists, their sludge or ectoplasm or whatever you want to call it, will stick around. So, free floating X parasites will just keep on going into those guys. <laughs> If you find yourself low on health, just stick around one of them and get it all back. And here we have our first missile expansion! Woo! This gives us an extra five missiles, <laughs> and believe me, we're gonna need them. What's through here? <laughs> it's the main deck. Superb. I'll quickly check the other way first. Oh, frig! <laughs> Let's try not losing too much health too soon. Anyway, you can see up the top right there on the minimap, the room to the right of us has a dot in it. That means that there's an item upgrade in there that we've already collected. As for this one, it's got a circle. This means that there is an item upgrade in here, but we've not found it yet. When in doubt, just shoot around, and voila! Another missile upgrade. <laughs> Now this may disappoint some of the more hardcore fans, but this will not be a 100% OH FRICK! This will not be a 100% run. Ugh. This will not be a 100% run, and no doubt I'm being punished for it already. <laughs> but I will go out of my way to get energy tanks and missiles whenever they're not too difficult to find. <laughs> The screen shifts really strangely here. Anyway, as for this guy, sometimes... Yeah. When his eye is revealed, shoot it with a missile. If it's shining, cheese it. <laughs> Red X Parasites restore a lot of your health in missiles, so try and get them whenever you can. And they're normally a good indicator that a boss is nearby. I think this new fusion suit just gives Samus a lot more flexibility. This right here is an energy tank! It gives us a fresh tank of energy. <laughs> there you go, we've now got 199 health instead of 99. Superb. Anyway, what's down here? Oh god, you guys! Ah, frick! <laughs> That, that thing's rolling attack can knock you off. Just hit the front of it with missiles. It's invulnerable at the back. Come on. Oh yeah, and it can breathe fire too. Okay, this is a core X. This thing's vulnerable to missiles. If you run short of missiles, just shoot it and it will release normal Xs. It follows your put it follows Samus, so shoot it. Just shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. <laughs> Ow, frick. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Yes. And as the computer said, we can use these X parasites to get our abilities back. And we've got the Morph Ball, another classic of the Metroid series. <laughs> Just press down twice to roll into a ball. Woo! Arguably one of Samus's best and most utilized abilities. <laughs> anyway, if you grab onto a ledge that has a small tunnel above it like this one, you can grab onto it and automatically roll into a ball. <laughs> it also feels and sounds and looks bouncier than normal. We don't have bombs for the Morph Ball yet, so if there's anything blocking our tunnels we have to clear it out ourselves. Oh, no, you didn't. Hey, computer! I already saved the station. Get me out of here. Anyway, that's, uh, yep. Green doors. We can't go through green doors yet. And unfortunately, not even a super missile will do it this time. 
Going into our map screen, you can see up the top right there, those are the different levels of security in the station, corresponding to different colours. If we somehow unlocked level 2, then we could get through these doors, but for the time being, there are a lot of places that we can't go. Give it time though. I'm sure if we can't negotiate with security, they'll try negotiating with our power bombs instead. <laughs> we'll get those in time, don't worry. Anyway, talk to me, Adam. But not too much, mind you. Samus, it's as I feared. The breeding environments have been invaded by ex-parasites. Sector 1, SRX, shows several abnormalities on biosensors. Sector 1 is a simulation of the SR388 ecosystem. To get there, take the main elevator to access shafts and use Elevator 1. Is your objective clear? Use the navigation room just inside for further briefing. I'm not sure, but I think that whoever allowed the X into the environment may be also linked to the earlier explosion. They'd better not touch my power suit. Anyway, there's a little Easter egg if we go in there. In fact, I'll show you guys real quick. And by real quick, I mean Sub-Zero Containment Area. How the hell did you get out? So that was the Husk of Ridley, who we apparently killed in Super Metroid and plenty of other games. <laughs> well, at least thank god Samus didn't have a nervous fit when she saw it this time. That was weird. Anyway, let's get to Sector 1. Elevator! Oh, main elevator's out. I like the atmosphere this game sets up. It gets a lot of criticism for being too linear compared to the Metroid games, but... I think this is the best Metroid game in terms of building up an atmosphere. <laughs> I'll probably repeat that many times. Apologies in advance. <laughs> anyway, here we are in Sector 1. Thank god all these places have different colour schemes, huh? The main elevator leading to the access shaft has been severely damaged. It will be totally unusable for some time, unfortunately. Some unknown agent is at work. Something very powerful. Certainly not human. I'll report when I know more. Now, listen closely. The X in Sector 1 have invaded the atmospheric stabilizers. They must be they must want to alter the environment to their needs. They are already reproducing. Clear all five atmospheric stabilizers to stop them. Is your objective clear? Now, get moving. So the rest of this episode I'll be taking out these stabilizers. We'll save it afterwards. <laughs> Let's charge up our energy. Especially considering that we're now part Metroid, Samus is very vulnerable to the cold. In most of the Metroid games, Samus has access to the Varia suit, which is an upgraded version of her original power suit that allows her to survive in extreme temperatures. Usually extreme heat, but this is the first game where I've seen it being used to survive extreme cold. Oh god, Ugh. I'm being attacked by a flying amoeba! <laughs> Sometimes ex-parasites can combine with each other to form more powerful entities. This is a good starting example, I guess. Ugh. At least Samus can still wall kick. Even if it's not very practical here. <laughs> anyway, a well-known easter egg about this game. 
the junk that the X has flying over it there, if you look in the top left corner of it, there's a Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> I don't know how far into the future the Metroid games are supposed to be set, but I like the fact that somebody on this station kept a classic console around. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep my NES as long as I possibly can. Yeah. Sometimes X will also transform into other enemies. Anyway, let's get under here. Another energy tank! <laughs> Maybe not so much missiles, but I'll definitely go out of my way for energy tanks. You better believe it. Anything through here? The controls for this game are absolutely sound, it's just me being a little too hasty. <laughs> anyway, you need to watch for those crumbling blocks like the one that my foot's on top of. You can only go one way with those guys, so if you screw up then you're going to have to go around again. Alright, two down, three to go. You know, I've seen people on the internet attempt to do a Metroid 2 remake with Metroid Fusion, Metroid Zero Mission S graphics, and they use graphics from in there because, after all, Metroid 2 is set on the planet SR388, and this is a replication of the environment, so it's actually pretty good. You. <laughs> Sucker. Whoa. i got to make sure I've not left any behind. <laughs> oh god, those guys. They're supposed to be space pirates, but occasionally they're also called Zebesians, or some variant of that thereof. <laughs> and that looks like lava, so let's tread carefully. We're also going to be ignoring the logic that Samus can somehow use her arm cannon to grip onto an overhead rail. I would have thought by now Samus would have had some kind of thing where, you know, maybe the arm cannon can move back and her arm comes out. Anyway, these guys can be quite tough. Just take them out with missiles, don't let them touch you even. Because they can do a lot of damage if left unchecked. Wow, a red one came from that? Nice. Ow, ow, frig, nope. <laughs> See what I mean? Ignoring the logic that I somehow outsped my missile when I was falling. <laughs> As for you, bearing in mind that Samus is in a big power, in a big heavy power suit, her movement in water is somewhat limited for now. Same goes for lava. If you fall in there, it's basically a death sentence. Anyway, there's only one vulnerable point in this thing, so we need to kind of work our way around. Is there a room down the bottom there? Nope. Let's go this way then. I don't think he's seen me. <laughs> For a second there I thought he wasn't going to see me at all. Anyway, I think we'll be coming back here later. I can hear stuff below here. You have to use a bit of suspension of disbelief when it comes to the 2D Metroid games because, well, I suppose in any 2D platforming game. <laughs> You would think, why don't you just go around it? I gotta time this correctly. Yes, there we go.
I don't know if you can see them too well, there are other of those creatures lurking around in the background, and occasionally the X's will fly down and take one right away. I don't know if they're healthy, or if they're just a bit more docile and need to... <laughs> they, need an extra par they need an extra X for confidence. That was a weird sentence. Anyway, let's go through here. Oh ho ho, an item! And you must be the item guardian! Nice try! So the completion percentage of this game does not keep track of mandatory items such as weapon power-ups. So it is possible in theory, it's very difficult in practice, you can complete this game with a 0% completion, <laughs> just as long as you avoid everything. Originally it was believed that you could complete this with only 1% completion because... Yeah, nice try buddy. Because apparently there's an energy tank later in the game that's impossible to avoid, but wouldn't you know it, the people on the internet have tried hard enough, and you can. Minimum runs are becoming quite common. I've seen them a lot with Zelda games, but very rarely with Metroids. Okay, nobody saw that. It's cool. That was a practice shot. There we go. Okay, this is going to be a bit awkward. We need to shoot our way through here. At the same time, avoiding you. You just press the jump button to fall off the, the overhead ladders like that. And what have we got through here? Two bad guys in the save room. <laughs> I'm half expecting it to laser me very soon. <laughs> oh. Wow, okay, that was lucky. <laughs> if that thing does ready up a laser, climb down as fast as you can or just jump. <laughs> ah. Oh, hello. Not seen one of you guys in a while. Hey, you guys are usually holding power ups. Ah, frig! When I left the Chozo, they told me this exact thing wouldn't happen! And it's firing back at me! Uh, uh, get away from me! Don't touch me! When it opens an eye to shoot at you, return the favour with a missile. These guys aren't too clever, just as long as you don't let them corner you. Right. You should be okay. Yes! What have you got for me? Charge beam! I'll take it. If you run out of missiles and you need to take on a tough enemy, the charge beam works wonders. Also, if you're charging up a charge beam, you can use your somersault jump like that to defeat certain enemies. Let's see if I can try it out. Or not. Anyway, shoot a missile here. Frig. <laughs> Let's try that again. Shoot a few more ordinary shots. Blah. Totally worth it, guys. <laughs> Makes me wonder how the creatures get between these rooms if they're not supposed to go into these areas, but yeah. Suspension of disbelief is strong in Nintendo games. Anyway, somersault jump! Hua! I said hua! Hua! If a single charge beam shot won't take out an enemy, then you're only gonna hurt yourself, so. Only really do that for weaker enemies. Yeah, gotta keep my health up. Gotta keep my face looking pretty. Now 
And that's us! We've taken care of all the atmospheric stabilizers. There you go. First try. Hey, have we gone in circles? Mm, not quite. Why are these two rooms listed as being connected if they're not? Oh, who cares. Let's get back to the navigation room. A lot of these rooms can get a bit seamy after the while, but just go the way that you're comfortable with. <laughs> Lucky for us, the only way we can go is the way that we know we're comfortable with. Will the charge beam work on these guys? Oh, it does. Excellent. <laughs> of course, you can just run through enemies too. Well, run through rooms. <laughs> Try running through the enemies just now and you're just going to end up in a whole heap of trouble. Oh, yes! Wasn't there an episode of Star Trek where they had to fight some kind of giant space amoeba? <laughs> oh, that show. What's it like? Atmospheric stabilizers online. But many X have already made it to other sectors, it seems. In particular, Sector 2, TRO. The tropical habitat shows abnormalities. I suspect the X entered this sector with the help of our unseen saboteur. He or it may be in TRO now. Samus, get over there. We need to put an end to this. Is your objective clear? Yes. Start moving. I'll brief you at the TRO navigation room. Yeah, we'll get there in just a second, buddy, but now we're going to save it. And that brings us to the end of our first episode. My name is Andy, and thanks for watching my playthrough of Metroid Fusion. Check back at least once a week for more episodes. I'll see you guys then.